Hello, friendos, and welcome to the second Zelathon book club meeting. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Yes, and now I'm going to cover it up with the camera so I'm not watching myself, you know, visually echo. Hi, guys! <laughs> so, yeah, we we want to start off again by t acknowledging the difficulty that a lot of you had in obtaining this book and apologizing for... We maybe would have announced it earlier if we thought that that would have helped, so we will keep that in mind for books that other books that may be harder to find not as in print anymore but um yeah feel free to still stick around we will we will not spoil you on like no things that can be spoiled no it's such a sweet little story um that for folks who are even still waiting on their books i would still really encourage you to um uh read the book if it if you manage to get a hold of it from the library eventually um I, I really enjoyed it. It took me a little while to get into it um, at the start because it is, it's, it's a slower pace um, than I think we're used to in a lot of our stories. Um, but it's a very thoughtful, a thoughtful, sweet book. It is. It's less, I mean, you know, compared to Holes, Holes is like a very plot driven book. Um, Oh, is Max quiet? I can bump her up in Discord. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm on a not my normal setup um, today. My husband is taking a really big exam over his office, and he needed the uh, webcam in order to like be proctored. <laughs> you are not exam. cheating. We are watching you. <laughs> right? Yeah, oh he's got like 15 people watching. <laughs> right now, it's no like, pressure. <laughs> um, but so like i'm streaming my video for my phone i've got like dinky little earbuds it is what it, it is. works <laughs> we're here we're talking we're here better Hooray! <laughs> but guys. yeah like pl whole i mean as is you know many fiction books are like it, it's polls is a very plot driven book like it's like there was a he was going somewhere, there was a specific destination in mind, and like everything led up to that. And this is more just like slice of life. Um, it's just, yeah. you know, if someone was just telling you about their childhood, it's very, um, I was telling guys, I, and, and I don't know how common, like popular the Little House books are outside the United States, but I feel like a good chunk of people that grew up in the States Read, read or had a little house book read to them yeah, at some point. I read point. at least a couple of them. Because it was just like the book for like, look how people lived in the beginning, the like, uh, not colonializing, the like westward expansion point, by which of course we mean look how the white people lived during that time. But like, you know. <laughs> It's okay, yeah. hipster. You can have thoughts in the chat, in the Discord chat afterward, and we will. <laughs> yeah, we could again um, <laughs> maybe maybe put stuff behind a spoiler tag in Discord um, for another couple of weeks until folks. Um, I think maybe Ilya had expressed interest in reading the book, but um, yeah. I'm still waiting on it. So until folks have a chance to actually get their hands on a copy. Um, but we can have conversations behind spoiler tags for a little while. Yeah. That is no big deal. Um, and Hipster, I'm sure you do have thoughts. I saw um, a comment that you put in chat uh, in the Discord yesterday. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> and I hadn't even gotten to that point in the book yet. I was just like, oh man, I bet. I, I bet I know what's coming, and sure enough, it came, and it, it was yeah. kind of rough. It was, it was kind of rough. Yeah. yeah. We, I don't know if that would have factored into our... I, ooh. Sorry. <laughs> no, I also, no, 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 I also saw that, and yes, dear... See, by there the name... so many Dear America books. I had no idea there was um, Dear Canadian Diary books. 
Yeah, I I did. I read Dear America books mostly because of the ribbon bookmark that was built in, and I thought that was just the coolest thing. But you know what? If that's what it took for me to read historical fiction and find out about things that happened in the country, okay. But yeah, no, there's definitely a point halfway through where this book becomes a little tough to read, especially right now. Um, and if people have to you know put that down for a bit and like wait till they're in a good spot to deal with it no judgment here um neither of us read this book ahead of time so we didn't know exactly how it was going to play out um though i will say i like you know if you're not reading this right in the middle of a global pandemic like i really appreciate just the honesty and the straightforwardness of the book in how the main character like how she expresses her grief like this is this is an upper elementary book but like you know for how many i was gonna say how many kids books deal with death and off the top of my head all i've got is a bridge to terabithia um and yet like you know there there are kids out there who you know you hope that kids don't have to deal with death for a long time but there are those that do and they need good examples of you know seeing that yes you do come through this and no things will never quite be the same but it will be okay like it was just yeah. it was very sweet it was very thoughtful in many ways yeah for sure um it's not it's not quite a coming of age story, I don't think, because um uh I'm blanking on her name, even though I just heard it like a million times. Omakayas? Um, I didn't actually do the audiobook, so tell me if I'm saying it wrong. Uh Omakayas. Omakayas, okay. Um, she's she's really young. Um, I think she's about like seven or eight yeah i think she's seven at the beginning of the book and she's eight by the end and i don't know that birthdays are really necessarily a thing of that culture so i don't know where the transition is but yeah yeah so it's not quite a coming of age but it's it's more of like a coming into self because you know that that is around the age where kids start to become more self-aware um right that age where they're like more Oh gosh, it's been years since I took child psychology. But like, I remember that age is like yeah. more when they transition from like, I want to make the grownups happy to like being more interested in the opinion, that, that opinion of their peers. Right. Um, but certainly like how they view themselves ties in with that too. Yeah, it is, it's also an age where they start to develop um, self-regulation skills. So we kind of see that as Amakeas, um, you know, starts to do chores uh, around the house and kind of like finds pride in it and then immediately <laughs> gets bogged down and wait a second, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> She's like, I, remember, I, I had that exact moment as a kid. Um, I, I'm a younger sister. Um, and have an older sister and like very much always wanted to be like just like her and do everything that she did she had started doing her laundry when she was around 10. she's three years older than me and i, like, I begged to be taught how to do my own laundry <laughs> and then as soon as like i think i was eight when my parents finally taught me how to do laundry and then as soon as i started doing it i was like this sucks <laughs> i don't want to do laundry anymore I still don't want to do laundry. I hate it. It's my least favorite chore. I, I've been putting some, it off for Someone like else can years. fold for me. I'm okay with the rest because it's just like dump stuff into a machine, move it to the other machine. Done. <laughs> Except for the part where they're not folded, but that's okay. They can just sit in a basket for a week, right? Fine. Fine. <laughs> I'm sure say, I don't want to be good at this thing. Why am I good at something I hate? The reward yeah. for a, well, a job well Very done really is more well. work, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, but we, we do see her, like, develop a little bit of pride, especially in, like, well, there's, there's a point when she has to care for other people, and right. um, she it's hard and grueling, but she does, like, feel comfort and pride in being able to care for others, and that's really cool to see happen. Right. Oh, no, no, we're having a laundry discussion. 
I know you can be bad at laundry. Um, there's a lot of ways to mess laundry up. <laughs> it's either you're acceptable at laundry or you've failed. <laughs> either bleaching something out or mixing colors up, um, accidentally tie-dyeing all your white um, shirts and underwear. Um, I have trouble even still sometimes with like detergent getting weird and streaky on my clothes. I just don't um, look that is... closely. If it's not obviously stained when it comes out and it smells okay, I'm like, it's fine. It's great. Sometimes I'll just, like, splash water on it. Laundry <laughs> bumper, no! <laughs> Does this make me feel bad for watching the side quest instead of doing household chores? <laughs> Gannon has thoughts about laundry? Is oh, boy. <laughs> we'll, okay. have to, we'll have to get him on chat eventually for that. <laughs> Laundry bumper, Ohio State. Oh boy. <laughs> Terrible. Anyway. I really um, liked the I really liked the sibling dynamic between her and, and Pinch. Like it's so yeah. I okay. I admittedly I actually got on really, really well with my younger brother, like best friends so like i don't haven't myself experienced the oh my gosh younger siblings thing but like it sounds pretty accurate to me <laughs> oc read the book Woo! Woo! good job oc um it's not my <laughs> turn is it my turn i turned discord off um, Ransom took his turn right before i got on so <laughs> y'all have to wait turns ahead of me <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> it's been a slow week in our Civ game. I'm sorry, we're <laughs> we're really excited about the turn going around. But just I just went to a war. Um, <laughs> I've got some work to do. It's gonna be great. But the the, the uh, family dynamics are just very relatable. Like, They're like yeah. very yeah, realistic. Sure. Like the sister yeah, being and a little so too annoying. Like you could you just get such. <laughs> annoying i would say like we're seeing him from you know the slightly older sister's point of view so like yes we're probably a little like you know a little bit more biased against him than we would be in real life not that he wouldn't be annoying to an adult too but like there's a little bit more like well of course he's gonna act like that he's like four i don't know right yeah yeah for sure that's what those little kids do they're wild oh and have way too much energy, oh my gosh. <laughs> so much. OC says um, he didn't realize that Amakeas was the adopted girl. Yeah, no, you um, kind of forget about the first chapter. I had thought about it a few times, like, I wonder. But then, because I was listening to it, I didn't know if I had just, like, zoned out for a minute. Right, you can't like, as easily go back. Them explicitly saying um if she had been or if it was her but I, I was kind of like piecing it together i figured it was one of the children um from the family right but it wasn't clear until later on yeah but i like that that like wasn't again trying not to spoiler stuff but like mm -hmm. it wasn't when it's like when she finds out it's not like a oh my gosh, I'm adopted thing. Like, it's a sort of a you were brought to this family for a purpose yeah. thing. And I really liked looking at it that way. Like, Yeah, that was really cool. I was wondering how the, the like, role of adoption plays out in this family and their culture. Because it seemed, like, all throughout the story that there was no question in any of the adults in this family, or really anybody in the family's mind that Amakias was just right. a part. Right, absolutely no one kid. was ever just like, well, you're not really a good daughter, but... Right, right, yeah, so it was almost like the adoption wasn't even, wasn't, isn't even a thing. Right, it's, it's just like, just... oh, this is our daughter too now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which, I don't, maybe yeah. that's more, like, like, I've never really looked into how, you know, culturally adoption is viewed in like other parts of the world but given that like i wonder if just less individualistic societies in general are more like make that mm -hmm. distinction less like you know it's already like the boundaries of what's considered family is already blurred like the people yeah. you live with in the community 
are your family, whether or not you're actually blood related. So like what what's the difference if this child isn't blood related when, you know, you already call the old lady down the road auntie when no one's blood related. Like it just it just doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is really gratifying to see lots of reviews online um, hailing this book, um, The Birch Bark House, as like the gold standard for um, Native American or American Indian representation in um, children's literature. There's a blogger that um, Trina and I both know a lot about because librarians read her a lot. Her name is Debbie Reese. Um, She writes for American Indians and Children's Literature blog is her blog um, and she does a lot of reviewing of um, really any titles that um, have Native American characters in them or set um, in Native American communities and um, it's really illuminating to find out how many characters and like beloved stories that we read growing up or even that are published today um, really rely more on tropes than, you know, trying to uh, find a truth for the characters that they write, if that makes sense. Um, Because, you know, one thing about writing fiction is that you know, you don't necessarily have to be historically accurate. However, if you are setting your story in the real world, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to, like, develop your characters in an honest way if, like, you aren't thinking of their experiences as rooted in the way that things, like, truly were in that time and in the culture that they were a part of. Um, So it's a a tricky line that authors have to walk all the time, especially white authors who oftentimes have never had to, like, engage deeply with other cultures. Um, So it's just a lot easier to rely on tropes, make assumptions. Yeah, um, like, it's it's possible for white authors to write accurate depictions, but you got to do a lot of research. Like, we don't have that same background whereas OC is asking is the author Native American yes she actually the tribe that she's Ojibwe yes she this is her writing about her own tribe from another point in time but like this is her history um and again that's I think I mentioned last week that's what we in the library book industry call own voices where it's like this is this is my people's experience whether that's a racial connection, whether that's um, LGBT, writing about LGBT, whether, or I should be more specific, it'd be like, you know, trans writing about trans. Gay writing about trans wouldn't necessarily count, I don't think. Um, It's not own voices. Yeah, no. Or, you know, a Muslim author writing about a Muslim character. So they just, there's been a big push for that in the last, like, five years? Is that how long we've had the own voices movement? Um, ish, I guess. or like how long the like term has long, been around? But it probably is. <laughs> I think that's about how long the term has been around, at least. Yeah. Um, but just yeah, it seems about right for like we need diverse books in general. Yeah, just you know, it, it's a lot less work for everyone if we just let people write their own authentic stories rather than being like, ah, we need more diverse books. I, a white author will take this upon myself it's just like right just just let them do it (laughs) right at the same time publishers can sometimes get lazy with it and um, can use it to pigeonhole authors of color oh yes doesn't mean you they can only write about their own experiences (laughs) right and that's the trick is like really in order to have more diverse literature we need more diversity in our authors but um Sometimes folks who are maybe well-intentioned but are just kind of missing the mark um, think that that means that, oh, we need more diverse books, so we should only have authors of color write about books. 
about kids of color. She's like, yes, we should have more authors of color write about kids of color, but also just authors of color should be able to write about whatever. General, they want yes. To <laughs> publish. Yeah. And then you know having more people also in the publishing industry so that when someone who is very well intentioned is just like I want to help write diverse books even though I don't know anything about the culture they can be like we understand what you're trying to do but like the way you wrote this character isn't actually necessarily going to help here's how we can help fix this <laughs> right I know yeah, so like when Trina brings up Little House on the Prairie earlier I was thinking about how um, that book has not aged well just in terms of like representation um and a lot of things that we consider like classic children's literature that are kind of period pieces set in those times um really have a lot of like racist tropes embedded in them and you know it's still okay to enjoy a story um that is problematic um it's just important to have the conversations about why it's not really okay to portray an entire race of peoples as savages. Right, and like, you know, Whatever. balance that out with another piece. Like, you know, if, let's say a teacher, like the curriculum said they had to do a little house book, like do the little house book, but then also do like this one basically like alongside of it. And then you get this really good, like, you know, compare and contrast, like, well, first of all, are they really that, you know, different like there's two families this is you know surviving with the world around them um but also helping to negate some of the misconceptions that one had about the other yeah there's some really interesting parallels even with just like the way that they are like constantly building and rebuilding um, their homes um because they've got like a summer home and then a winter home that they travel to um, and it did, it, it did remind me a little bit of um, the beginning of the Little House books. One of the big things that really sticks out to me in terms of imagery is um, from the Little House books that I've not read them since I was a kid. <laughs> but I do remember um, that Pa, probably, is he Pa? Yeah, he's Pa. <laughs> <laughs> that Pa built the Little House. Like, that's, that's the whole thing about the Little House on the prairie. They built it with their own hands. Right. Of course, they moved, like, every book, and I don't remember why, but... <laughs> they just inch further away. I was going to say, every time, it was just like, and now we're in Missouri, and now we're in, like... It seemed a little less, like, planned out, honestly, than, you know, this family, where it's just like, we have this, like, seasonal rotation, and there's, like, a good reason we're moving. Not just, like, I'm bored and I'm leaving? I don't... There were probably reasons. I just don't remember them. Um, OC says they have a term in Swedish sort of translated to write to interpret. So like an LGBT plus author has more right to write about or interpret an LGBT plus story. That's really cool. Yeah, no, and I'm glad that like multiple cultures are having these discussions. Like I, with the United States being as like diverse as it is like it's harder to ignore like I'm not saying people don't ignore these discussions but like it's a little harder to ignore when like you know you walk down the street and depending on where you live you can pat like you know see like 10 different cultures just in the people that are walking around versus we at least I think over in the states tend to look at like European countries as being a lot more um, homogenous. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Not sure how true that is, but I'm, I'm glad that the discussions are being having, being had, nonetheless. Right. Uh, well, yeah. I really liked Old Tallow. <laughs> In real life, she would intimidate the heck out of me. Can I just say? But like. She's like the awesome she's a grizzled old badass. <laughs> she's like the I'm not putting up with nothing from any y'all. <laughs> it's just like you know when, when you're when you're that person that you she has like the little soft spot for and just like that making it like worth it so much more when you just like I don't like you I don't like you I don't do you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and, you know, and without getting too deep into it, like, hearing her story at the end, like, really, like, finally shines a light on, like, who she is as a person, too, like, because you, you, you see that grizzled old tough exterior, but you, you learn a little bit more about her why, um, and why Makayas is, um, so special to her, right, right? which, yeah, it was really nice. Nice to see, like, well-rounded adults. We talked last time about <laughs> we did. how uh, adults aren't real people, but I think the adults in this story were pretty real. Yeah, no, I, you know, we, you know, the mom, um, I, I didn't mark specific examples of stuff. I don't know if we saw as much of the dad as I was hoping, which, I mean, he was, yeah. you know, had to be off hunting, but, writing. like, the mom and the grandma, the grandma especially, I think, we saw a lot of depth to. Mm-hmm. Also the dad's friend who was always just like, I had a vision, and like, they were urging yeah, him, and they were just like, talking smack about him, and he just like, did not even realize. <laughs> <laughs> It was a, it was a, it was a good book and and it was a good book. for those who were able unable to should should still try to, to get around to reading it. Just kidding. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah. I always love when you know books have little little illustrations. Like it doesn't have to be a lot, but like here's old Tallow looking badass. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, were you able to get um, the map? Oh, right. Your computer. Yes. We're going to um, take a look at that. Yes, because I completely forgot about it while I was actually reading the story. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, that's, first of all, that's where things were in relation to each other. And secondly, um, this this is where, like, the, the people actually live in terms of, like, locations I would recognize. Um, yeah. That's definitely something I miss listening to audiobooks since we don't get the map. Right, right. They really should have, like, appendices yeah. to go along with audiobooks. Yeah. Some I would say there. Hoopla could have, like, a PDF or something. They can... I got it through Libby. Oh, okay. But still. Right. Okay. Uh, they have to should have that. Create new. Yeah, no, Hi. you keep talking, and I will try to get this map pulled up. <laughs> okay, I'm talking to the little dog. She's starting to get needy, because it's getting close to the I-N-N-E-R time. <laughs> um, but I can't pawn them off on their father right now because of the aforementioned exam. Right. So. <laughs> we'll see. I might have to hop out for a second. Okay. Huh. That is way too big, but it is but, on the screen. Hold oh, on. there it is. <laughs> That's not a map. Huh. It's a crow. That, yes, that's that's the words. So yeah, apparently this was like 1847, which I did not realize again until like right beforehand. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait, nope, still cut off. Wait, no, that's just my hand. Okay, so that <laughs> just plopped on top. <laughs> this is the map of the book. So apparently all this is like Lake Superior sort of, mm-hmm. I'm not familiar with this part of uh, Minnesota super well, but I think this, like, um, I'm pointing at this map, like, it's gonna actually show up on y'all's screen. I think the little, like, <laughs> divot, like, the little peninsula that pokes out to Lake Superior, I think that's, like, the very top of Wisconsin? Uh, yeah? Maybe? But, yeah, Lake Superior. <laughs> North. Right, Cold. Bye, <laughs> Have a good evening. And... Yeah, actually, let me, we actually, we want to look at the book stuff. Let me sort of zoom in on that. Yeah. Also say, hi, Aurelius. I see you in chat. We're talking about the book. Welcome. So yeah, we got the, the Birch Bark House far, farthest to the east, I guess. We got the, the, the snow village further west and... Not a great scale of how far in between they are, and I don't remember if they mentioned how long it took to, like, traverse between the two. But I'm sure it was, like, yeah. a couple days worth, probably. Okay, I'm putting our faces back. But, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I'm showing you pictures, forgetting that you did not actually get a chance to look at the pictures. <laughs> it's cool. Show me more pictures. Um, You've got so, good ones in the book. Yeah, so here's uh, her encountering the little oh, the baby bears. bear cubs. And then, you know, five minutes later, mama bear being like, what you do with my babies? Mm-hmm. Uh, is, was the Birch Park house an actual IRL location? Um, I mean, the house itself, probably not, but um, I think that is like the general region where the Ojibwe um, were and maybe are still residing. I don't actually know. Yeah, we should have done some research. This is all very last minute. Should have done some research. <laughs> should have finished the book more than an hour ago. Shh, don't tell of our secrets. <laughs> This is an hour oh, and a half ago. Here's, no, here's, I'm just trying to make everybody feel better. Here's uh, her and, and baby brother in his little... Uh, oh, the baby brother. Thing. The baby brother. The relationship was so sweet. It was. And I... Okay, the moccasins, like, nestled into each other was such, like, a small detail, but it was such mm -hmm. a sweet one. Like, it's just, like... Home is in the little details, you know? Yeah. Like... My my both my parents are home and just life Her shoes are all dumped. It's like a together. hug. It's yeah. like a hug. My husband and I also share a um, pile of shoes. Uh, well, that like would, human stories. <laughs> I say I I think Redsom has like Redsom has a single pair of shoes and then I have like ten. <laughs> <laughs> Most of which are probably sandals that need to be put away at this point. Oh, oh, hold on. I gotta share the coat. Just, that is Old Tallow's coat. Hello. Wow. It's fantastic. That is something. Yeah, no wonder she's terrifying. <laughs> shoes are, oh, Hipster thinks shoes are symbolic in a few places. I would agree with that. I'm sorry, you're needy. You do actually have food over there that you could eat. I can I can show you a couple of uh, the pictures, a couple more pictures afterward when, <laughs> since they're spoilery, <laughs> I don't want to spoil people who aren't able to read right. it, but I will, right. I will show you. I will, this one's not spoilery. Uh, that's yeah, her and her, uh, where... her cousins just oh, being like okay. a, a, a gang of girls, just. Being kids together, being cute. Yeah. yeah, to Hipster's point, there's definitely a moment later on where, like, the imagery of shoes is something that's, like, absolutely heartbreaking. Um, yeah. So it is kind of a theme throughout. And, of course, you know, Amake asks, puts a lot of love into making shoes um, when she starts kind of developing her skills in that way. Yeah, and I think it's, like... I think it's so sweet that, you know, it's like, I have, I have this ability now and I have this material and it's not, I'm going to make some awesome stuff for myself. It's, you know, I, what can I make for my family and who would get the most use out of it? It's just like, yeah. Mer. Yeah. Oh, did they mention kind of a... Tallow having worn out shoes? I sh they probably did. I'm more remembering yeah. the dad, like, wearing out his shoes all the dang time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Because he, like, really needed a new pair. Yeah. But, yeah. Um... I think that's all the things I wanted to say about the book that aren't spoilery. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I did not I did not prepare an entire document <laughs> of discussion prompts and questions ahead of time for this book. Sorry, friend. It is what it is. We're coming as we are today. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um Oh, I did oh, the, like the um there's are there three, four? There's, like, three stories in here that, like, it, it's a, is it, 
I think it's almost always the grandmother telling the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I guess one is the father, but just, like, you have a, a separate story just partway through that's, like, has its own section, which I'm, I'm curious, I'd be curious to know how many of those are, if any of those are just straight up stories from, from the, that nation's, um, I know like the Wendigo is, like, an actual mythical creature. Right. Because there's an X-Files episode about the Wendigo. Or no, maybe it was Charmed. I think I don't, was there Charmed. was a Supernatural episode, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm sure Charmed didn't get it right. Um. Yeah, through stories. <laughs> but they even, like, they even get their own, like, sub-listing in the table of contents. It'll be like, here's the chapter list, and here's where you can go find the that story, in case you want to read it again. Mm-hmm. I really liked um, the dad story, the ghost story. I thought that one was funny. It was fun. It's just like, and then I tricked them. They were going to eat us. Yeah, Inka, we can talk about Charmed another time for sure. <laughs> I have big feelings. Big feelings. I was super into it when I was like 13, 14, which is a great time to be into a show that's all about female and balance. So we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> But this show isn't about that show. <laughs> Not <laughs> today. Really I even rewatched it like a year or two ago on Netflix. Um, and as an adult, I can admit it's a terrible show, but I still have so many feelings about it. <laughs> oh, feelings. Sorry, I did have one more thing to talk about the book. And feelings, that was sure. like the there were a few times when I just um, tell me again how her name was pronounced. Omakeas. Omakeas, thank you. Where you kind of had like an inside Omakeas's head, like, like really early on, there's the bit where like she's trying to like get away from her chores and she gets caught and sister and mom are laughing at her and she's just really angry. And like, um, oh, how is it free? All of last night's thunder in her heart. Like, mm. just they really dug into like how she was feeling sometimes and it wasn't just she was mad it's like this is this is how it feels to feel mad and yeah. you know and most kids by that age have started coming to terms with like you know with preschool that's the usually the age where it's just like there's something going on in me and I don't know how to deal with it and like putting names to the emotions and how you deal with them but that doesn't I don't know. That doesn't mean those feelings go away when you're older. Inko's asking if there's a pronunciation guide in the book. Um, yes. I oh, did not actually... I usually used it oh. for um, definition double-checking rather than oh, actually Is there, like, a it. whole glossary? Yeah, no, there's, like... Cool. How many pages long? Yeah, no, there's, like, four full pages of glossary. Yeah, and I listen to the audiobook Inca, which sometimes I get the other directions, and I'm like, how is it spelled? spelled? I need to know. <laughs> Especially, like, listening to the Outlander books. Um, the uh, narrator of those books is fantastic, but, like, holy heck, how do you spell those Scottish names? <laughs> and then I have to go look it up afterwards. I'm like, why are there so many vowels? <laughs> I think there's one in particular I think is, like she pronounces it Lear, but it's spelled like Laug hair. <laughs> what? Okay, the little dog is really upset. Trina, are you able to talk to chat for just a few minutes? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. You're all right. <laughs> all right. We could. Well, she's got. We did. I did still want to do a um. The just talking about what else we've been reading recently. I don't know if I can mute her while she's gone. I'll probably be, forget to unmute her when she comes back. I'll just leave it. Um, so I, I had actually already read this by the time we had last month's club, but I totally should have said it then because it's the per, it's a perfect Halloween book. Um, I don't know how many of y'all are into like horror stuff. And of course there's different brands of horror, right? There's the supernatural based horror and then there's the creepy human being horror guess what this one has both 
Um, the book is Mexican Gothic, and I've forgotten the author's name. Um, I want to say it's Sylvia something. But it takes place in Mexico. Um, she's from Mexico City. I think the location that most of the book takes place in is a little further out in the boonies. Um, in, like, the 1950s. Um, and the main character is, like, this socialite. Um, and her cousin has been married to a, um, there's this family of, like, I think they're supposed to be English, but, like, Europeans that moved over some time ago and have this, like, house out in this town. And, um, you know, the, the, the cousin's husband, of course, is very, like, charming at first. And it's just like, oh, we haven't heard from her in a while. Or we have, and it doesn't sound like she's doing so well. You, you, you're close with that cousin. Go, go check her, go check on her. And it's just one of those very much like, something's not right here. And it, it was great. Um, okay, yes, Sylvia Morena Garcia. Um, and the cover is, I don't know if I have a super fast way to show you guys the cover, but it's just like, um, this like darker skinned woman, short black hair, and like this absolutely like, gorgeous dress. Like she's just come from a dance, and it's full. It was a good book. I recommend it if you like horror, or even if you're not sure you like horror. I, I'd say it's a good one to start with. Um, it came out pretty recently, so it should be not that hard to find. I say that. I know that's not always the case. Um, okay, I'm back. Hi, I was telling them how much I liked reading Mexican Gothic. Reading what? Mexican Gothic. I've never heard of it. It's a horror book. It came out like Ooh. over the summer, I think. Cool. But it was it was one that I saw like referenced a few times at um the PLA conference and it was just like, oh, yeah. so one to watch for and then I actually got around to it and it was P good if you if you like horror. But cool. What else have you I'm been like reading? A, I'm like a Shirley Jackson kinda horror fan. <laughs> Phil has already tagged it as next. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, Phil. I'm so happy you're making such good use of Libby these days. That's awesome. Oh, oh, Ilya's ready. Ilya's ready. Tell us what you've been reading, Ilya. My time to shine. <gasps> Wish to tell everyone once again about Oh, yes, you did before. mention that. Hold on. I did not actually remember to look that up last time. I am typing in chat. That's not going to help me Google anything. Is it something... We haven't, Tria, I don't think we've actually picked December's book yet, have we? You picked it. You picked the graphic novel. Oh, we're going to go with that one? Cool. I assumed we were. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Do I hope we picked it. We December. have to announce it at the end of, of the session. <laughs> we can do that. Because <laughs> we're meeting again in uh, three weeks. Yeah. It's a day. It's a little it's a shorter session, turnaround. So. Folks are going to need time, but it was available in uh, Hoopla, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And it's a comic, so, so you know, or it's Rapid Devil, yeah. a, little, a little faster to read. Much faster. Yeah, we're trying to keep it simple, keep it accessible. Legendborn is an urban, urban fantasy, fantasy about yes. <laughs> Arthur and the Round Table, but also uh, racism and death so much. Don't, don't mind me. This is me uh, seeing if my library has a physical copy. Keep talking. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you don't really um, honestly see much fantasy, especially like Arthurian style fantasy, actually address topics of racism. Um, so that's really cool. Please. Sounds like Holes. various Netflix shows. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, okay, but, like, done well, usually. Um, yeah, the only, like, uh, diverse urban fantasy I can think of off the top of my head um, is Shadow Shaper um, by... Uh, it's a dude, but he is Hispanic. Um, Daniel something, I think. But, like... Yeah, no, it's it's a lot, again, like, we were talking about, you know, it's like, ah, oh, we want these diverse authors to write the real-life experience 
things, but it's like, okay, but also, have you considered diverse fantasy? Um, mm -hmm. Like, like, uh, like Jemison, who I did watch stream the other day. It was very entertaining. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah, shout out. I don't know if we have any bot commands set up. I don't think we do. But um, N.K. Jemison is a black female um, fantasy author who writes epic fantasy. And uh, she also streams on Twitch. So go check her out. <laughs> I would say she didn't, she didn't have a game set for some reason. Like, she didn't have whatever it was uh, set. I think it was an Assassin's Creed game she was playing. But I have not actually played, so don't quote me on that. Yeah. That would make sense for someone who's into epic fantasy. Um, also, we can see if I can pop her. Yeah, okay. I will, I will pop her into... Fantasy. Oh, yeah. There's her, uh, there's her, her, her channel, if anyone wants nice. to go follow. <laughs> nice. Purely an Inca question, because she's curious. Are there any books by Belgian authors that got famous enough to be known in the States? I don't know if I would know that they were Belgian. Like, I don't know. I would have to see to the list honest. and see what I recognized. Yeah. I think I was in high school before I realized that Belgium was a country. Oh, sorry, Inca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like, we, you know. We just don't hear about Belgians a lot. Gosh, yeah, no, you grow up, like, okay, France, Spain, Germany, like, Holland, but mostly mm -hmm. because of, like, you know, Dutch stuff. Hooray. Um, <laughs> no, Belgium kind of gets lost in there. <laughs> it's so small. Okay, but lots of European countries are small. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Everything so is small by US standards. if you named a few Inca who are super famous, we could like, maybe react to them. Oh, yeah, I heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, pop a list into the, into the Discord chat. We'll, we'll look it over. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know what I was going to say or do. No, are we just talking about good things we're reading? Yeah, no, that that's, I was getting the, the currently reading chat going. Cool. Um, I was currently reading The Birch Bark House. But well, yes. <laughs> Other than book club books. <laughs> um, another uh, group of internet friends, actually, um, and I have been doing a little book club, and we just chose a new book that I think is actually a collection of short stories. Um, what is it called? I haven't actually started yet, but I'm planning to read it by my cozy fireplace. Ooh. I'm so excited. Also, your phone uh, did not actually turn your video when you turn. You're sideways now. <laughs> oh, so I am. <laughs> it's because I left uh, Discord. I'll be back in the chat. Um, but Libby apparently has no landscape mode, so this is <laughs> Come on. Okay. A manual for cleaning women. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -mm. By Lucia Berlin. No, I don't know anything about it, but I'll report back to you guys. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, good. Yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah, short stories. Uh. <laughs> In all not a novel, but Smurfs there we go. Magic. You know what? Sometimes the yeah. short stories are Top easier to icon. nice, nice, neatly built in like breakpoints. If you are like, I'm, I'm getting worn out. Right. Phil just finished the troop, a horror about a Boy Scout troop from Prince Edward Island dealing with a um scary thing. Ooh. What if Lord of the Flies except body horror? <laughs> oh no. Oh God. I barely made it through Lord of the Flies uh, when I had to read it. Maybe in middle school, maybe high school. But I hated it. Ooh, excuse me. I did not enjoy Lord of the Flies. I mean, wasn't the, it probably doesn't help that the author's point seems to be like, look, all people are terrible people when no one is stopping them from being terrible people, so. Right. Which, okay, you like that one much you know more. What? That's good. Teen boys sometimes. Um. <laughs> mm -hmm. They make you wonder. Oh, These characters get their comeuppance. 
Hipster points out that that Tintin is is Belgian, and I oh. I did not know that Tintin existed until they did the live action movie like ten years ago. I don't remember. Um, they did a live action movie at some point. I'm like, oh, this is this comic that's been around for like a really long time. Look at that. It's super popular still. Maybe not super popular, but like fairly popular. Right, I like recognizable. Recognizable. Mm hmm. Comparing, <laughs> write an essay comparing Lord of the Flies to Helmet. Oh, Hamlet. Oh boy. <laughs> is it about how awful teenage boys are? <laughs> I feel like that's the, the main egg. overlap. <laughs> Eggs. I had that. Oh, I had the. Uh, I had that memorized once. The to be or not to be. <laughs> It is dramatically angsty. I don't think I have most of it anymore, but it's just like, all the terrible things in life, why do we bother? Plot mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> most of that part of your life out of your mind. That sounds <laughs> fair. Yes. Ugh, high school English, no thanks. Um, let's see. In visual stories, I... I've started rewatching Gossip Girl, so that's been <laughs> great. I saw like a snapshot or something. Apparently, they're rebooting it. It's going to be much more diverse. So woo for that. Um, but it was very nostalgic. Uh, back I'm watching the first season again. Um, I was saying, yeah. the, rich people are terrible. People is not my my preferred choice in in viewing, but. <laughs> Power to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, it's definitely one of those things that if it were on now, I'd be like. But um, I think nostalgia plays a big role. Like I watched this; it was on when I was in high school, or at least it came on. When I was right. School. Um, and that was, I was super into it then. At least the first season, and then I went to college and stopped watching television for a while. Yeah, it's funny how that works when, like, there's not TVs in convenient places right. often. Right. Yeah, you've got a lot of other stuff to do. Yeah, no, I think that's pretty much when I stopped watching Survivor, so there's that. Mm. <laughs> oh, good old Steve. I have never... Okay, I, I haven't read any Stephen King um, mm. except for, like, I think I listened to the first, like eight chapters of the first uh, Dark Tower book on Libby and was like, eh. <laughs> yeah, we, we listened to it on a road trip once, but I slept through the first like several hours of it. And by the time I woke up, I'm lost. <laughs> I don't have interest. I'm going to do something else now. Um, but I like what I have read of Stephen King, which has not been much. I read some short stories. Like, I would uh, say, I probably collection. will try the short stories at some point. Yeah, yeah. there's a collection that includes, um, I think it's called like The Four Seasons or something, but it includes Frida Hayworth and The Shawshank Redemption, which I read after I saw the movie and loved. Um, so I went back and found the story and really enjoyed it. I think The Green Mile was also a short story of his. I don't think it was a full novel. I could be. I also am pretty sure I haven't really seen any. I also haven't seen any movie adaptations of his books, even though like they're all like big name movies, basically. Like I haven't seen. It's super good. Um, cause like The Shining is is one right that was based on a Stephen King. Maybe, my something else that was based on a book anyway. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen uh The Shining. Oh yeah 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 that's Stephen. King. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen Green Mile. I haven't seen Shawshank. I haven't. There's many movies I have not seen. Just period. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. Someone, someone, get me a good short list of the uh, Stephen King books that don't have. I'm not gonna read it because I've heard about the weird scene in it, and I know I've I've seen I've seen some of his uh, some Stephen King passages pop up occasionally on the uh, men writing women subreddit. <laughs> so like, you know, maybe, I don't know which one, ha which books have the worst of that, but 
there, there's probably some that aren't as bad. <laughs> yeah. I have not read or seen it, but those first clowns freak me out a little bit. Ilya's recommending the Joy Luck Club uh, for a short story. I didn't realize that was short. Like, that's been on one, like, I think on my, oh, yeah, I need to get around to that. I didn't realize it was short stories. I thought that it was a novel. Amy Tan has done full novels, though, right? Like, she's done a bunch of books. I think so. I think. Let's check Goodreads. I have it up. (laughs) I saw a tweet from her the other day. I don't remember what the tweet was about, so that would be terrible. <laughs> um, the Joy Luck Club is 288 pages. Oh, that's not bad. I should, again, my struggle is just reading things that aren't kids' books so, because I can't. Uh, but it looks like it's made up of four stories. So. I, can't, I can't recommend the adult books to the kids I work with usually. <laughs> right. Yeah, every now and then you'll get a teenager who's, like, really ready and on the cusp. Yeah, um, the, we have a separate team. We have a separate team area, so they don't often end up down in our section. Um, so, yeah. more often it'll be like, okay, I have read some YA. Here's the YA book I will recommend to a, like, fifth, sixth grader who's a little higher level and, like, seems like they're about ready to start reading stuff from the other section. I read the questions on Goodreads. It was. <laughs> oh, people are weird. Uh, the questions on Goodreads remind me of um, the Yahoo questions occasionally. <laughs> Do you remember mm-hmm. Yahoo questions? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's like it's like a grab bag. Of. I'd say there's the like thought, you know basically. very thoughtful <laughs> ones, and then there's the like real bum ones, like. Who let you on the internet? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Admittedly, Yahoo questions did give us the uh, the pregnant uh, pronunciation video. That's hilarious. So, (laughs) pregante. (laughs) Pregante. Great. Love it. Uh, Well, we're closing in on an hour. I was say, um, how are you feeling? About, I'm a little tired. Okay. I'm out of things to say. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for the short discussion today, friends. Um, should we should we announce next month's read now? I think we probably should, since people probably only have should. three weeks. Okay. So um, next month we are going to be reading Fun Home by Allison Bechtel. Um, it is an adult graphic novel, so there are going to be slightly more um, adult themes in this story than um, in obviously the kids' books that we've done so far. I don't remember if there's nudity <laughs> or not in it. Um, it's probably fine. Uh, it's not like we're going to be showing the nudity on stream. Yes, no, correct. <laughs> So it is a memoir, a graphic memoir, written by Alison Bechtel. I'm gonna pop the Goodreads. Oh, you beat me! I beat you! (laughs) (laughs) Good job. Uh, And it's it's a memoir that is all about the author's relationship with her father, um, written in retrospect after his passing, which is not a spoiler because it's something that she explores in the first few pages um, of the book. It is available in Hoopla, we checked, and Hoopla is super cool on like um, phones, but tablets in particular, because when you're reading comics or graphic novels, they've got that panel by panel view, so you can like really zoom in on the illustrations um, and appreciate them. And um, yeah, it's just, it's been a few years since I've read it, so I'm excited to revisit it. I love it. It's a, a Tony-winning musical now, too. Um, so I don't know if we can have a big movie night in Discord where we... <laughs> oh, I thought you were about to be like, let's play music from it beforehand. And I'm like, DMCA! DMCA! Right. <laughs> yeah, we will not be watching it on the screen. That's for sure. <laughs> um, 
Oh, it's in Inca's library too. Excellent. Great. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, it, it is very famous. Uh, so <laughs> there's a safe bet that it would be more widely available than the Birch Park House, especially since it was made into the musical. But yeah, I really recommend um, Alison Bechtel. She's a queer um, co co graphic novelist. <laughs> but she started she started in um comics with a comic strip series that i don't think i can say the title on screen um <laughs> type it into chat we won't tell anyone <laughs> chat chat isn't saved on the video <laughs> um well it's saved in the vod as long as the vod lasts well yes um, but that's that's different than the youtube but Anyway, if you're interested in uh, queer comics and graphic novels, um, check out more of Alison Bechtel's work. But um, Fun Home is a great story. It's a, it's not super lighthearted. Um, so I don't know if you have strong feelings about your parents or mixed emotions about your relationship with your parents. Um, it could be a harder read or it could be a really cathartic read. Um, you know, just check in with yourself and see what you're feeling and what you're ready for. Um, yeah, so that is Fun Home in a nutshell. I'm excited to get started on that and uh, we'll be ready to talk about it again when we meet back here in three weeks yeah. on December 12th. All right. And uh, apparently <laughs> we're gonna be at 6 p.m. next month. Oh yes, no, they keep changing the time on us. It's all right, we'll um, let you all know. <laughs> I'm partially responsible for that. But sorry, it's fine. Well, we're we're finding our groove and we'll settle in to something soon. Uh, yes, Ilya, a library card will help. Um, <laughs> Oops. Library. Sometimes a photo ID works too, though. If you're going to well, the library. yes, if you're a person, not so much with the app. If people want to know what the uh, oh, this is oh wait, no, it sort of oh, does no. work. This is what you can. See, you can zoom in and look at details very nicely. Obviously, yes, it will work better on a tablet with a bigger surface area than a phone, but but it's, it's, it's hoopla. It's, it's pretty good for comics. Phew. Okay. My phone very helpfully notified me that I had, like, a minute left in Discord. Oh. Because I've set, like limits on my social media. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, and I guess we should wrap up. Okay. I'm like, we're wrapping up anyway. Go, go, go. <laughs> we're <wrapping> up. <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming, oh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Good, uh, good searching strategies, Phil. Very proud of you um, for changing up your query to find the information you were looking for. Well done. Um, yeah, and thanks y'all for hanging out today. I understand um, for Zelda Fun Hosts is going to be a little um, after gaming happening soon, so if y'all are doing that, enjoy. Um, and yeah, the next community event Thanksgiving is Day. Yes. It's going to be on Thanksgiving Day. Come back on the 26th, next Thursday. Clinkett's going to be hosting a special stream starting at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, and if anybody's hung out in Clinkett's streams before, especially on holidays, you know that they make it um, really fun and special. Uh, so have, if... Have food um, nearby. You'll get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but it's going to be really fun to see everybody in chat um, sharing on our good friends can get this in the fine next week yeah. all right all right thanks for coming everyone bye, bye. bye.